ายอยู่ตรงนี้ไม่ได้นะครับอยู่ไว้ตัวสุดท้ายนี่มันจะมันก็ say hi there you go smile big smile okay poor Elle Bell's having a tough morning so what if she could come sit with me wouldn't you be happy Yeah, we're going to get the Bible out here right now. Okay, we are in Mark, and we just did verse 21 on Friday, and now we're going to do verse 22 and see how far we want to go, because it's, it's a long, it's not that long of a paragraph, but it's a packed paragraph, that's for sure, right? Yeah. And so, verse 22, they brought him to the place Golgotha, which is translated place of a skull. So, they take him to Golgotha, Hebrew, place of the skull, which is also Calvary. So, same word. So, when we say Calvary, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the place where Jesus was crucified. Where is that? Well, it's something that's not fully agreed upon by everyone. I feel fairly confident in my camp, but people feel fairly confident in the other camp too, so that's fine. There are two locations in Israel that are proposed to be Calvary. You leaving me? Yeah. Oh, fair. Okay. Off you go. One of those two places is located inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. You want to be back in the video. And so there's a hill, kind of, inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and it's right next to the, the tomb in the Holy Sepulchre and all this other stuff. So you go inside the church and you can see these things. But there's also what's called Gordon's Calvary. And it's coined after the guy who kind of made the claim that this is Calvary. And what you find on the north side of Jerusalem, the north side of the city, there is a hill a hill which you can kind of see the face of a skull in. Something else significant about this hill is that unlike the Holy Sepulchre, which is due west of the temple, um, this hill is along the ridge line of Moriah. And I'm of the camp that when Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, he did it on Moriah. That's what all the Jews believe too. But what they would tell you is that it was at the location of the temple. But what you find is if you're walking the ridge line, right? It's, you know, a mountain not just being one peak, but a, a kind of a ridge of mountain right above the temple mount, higher than the temple mount. The highest point on that Mount Moriah is what we call Calvary or Golgotha. And the idea of Jesus being crucified in the same place that Abraham would have tried to sacrifice Isaac. And so it's on the north side of the road there that the cross would have been placed, among other crosses. And you see, when you go out the northern gate, we have today there is the Damascus Gate. And the idea was is that was the road that led off to Damascus. It was a main road traveled by many people. And so when you crucified someone, you put them on display in a very public place. It's kind of like crucifying people off of I-82 or Wine Country Road or something like that. A road that there's a lot of traffic and so everyone sees what's going on. We read, in fact, I, I don't ever remember because I'll get all the Gospels kind of blur in my mind sometimes, but the passerbys, people are going to pass by and mock him. And, ah, verse 29, And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads, saying, Aha, you say you destroy the temple and you could build in three days. Right? And that's the idea is that there's all these people. Thank you. All these people who are passing by Jesus there. So he was on display in this location that was a very public and well traveled place. And when they gave him wine, verse 23, mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. So this was something that was going to numb the pain, something that actually would have kind of helped him. But he denies that. Now, he will get a drink later, but it's not this stuff, this mingled drink that has kind of a, you know, a numbing effect. And it says, when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting for lots, them to determine what every man should take. 
So here's the soldiers now dividing his clothes and they're rolling dice basically to see who gets to keep what from the king of the Jews. Now it was the third hour and they crucified him and the inscription of his accusation was written above, the king of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. So the scriptures was numbered or was fulfilled, which said he was numbered with the transgressors. And so here we see the reference back to Isaiah 53, 12. He's numbered with transgressors. So he's being crucified alongside of actual transgressors, people who had actually broken the law of God. And here's where we already read, those who pass by blasphemed, wagging their heads saying, aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. And so here's all the people passing by, walking down that Damascus road. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking uh, among themselves. And they said, he saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Now, maybe I'll pause in verse 32 because it's worth noting here that at this point, even those who crucified were, were crucified with him reviled him, talk trash. And yet what we find is by the end, one of those two thieves will say, Lord, remember me, right, in your kingdom. And Jesus said, as surely I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise. It's kind of cool to see how even in the last hour, in the last minutes, with very little time, we see someone give their life to the Lord. He never gets baptized. He never does any good works. He never goes to church. But he gets to be with Jesus in paradise. And maybe it's just a nice closing note to remember, again, the simplicity of the gospel. Believe and be saved. Flies. Ugh. There's a reason why the devil's called Lord of the Flies. Yes, yeah, flies. No fun. It's right there. Get it. She's been terrified of flies ever since she got stung by a bee. And then she thought that the bee was a fly. So now she thinks that flies can sting her. Yeah, I know. They're horrible, aren't they? All right, here, can you say goodbye to everybody? Because they all love you and they want to say goodbye to you. Say bye-bye. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Good job. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. You guys have a great day. Say bye-bye again. Bye-bye. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, see you guys.